Warning, Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Welcome to Gory Story Time. I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co host and his father, Craig. And for those who don't know, then obviously you don't watch a lot of community television. But this is the show where, for now 102 episodes, we watch a horror movie and review. Well, there's been other ones that right, don't right. technically count, but. Okay. Um, like the Twilight ones, which aren't you planning on finishing well, next I do week? I plan so on get finishing it? those. Yes, because your mom has to watch it with you and I feel bad for you. I, feel I bad still for protest. Me. But anyway, uh, we watch a horror movie, we review a horror movie and the the twist is he's been watching them since he was 5. What? And spoiler alert. Reviewing them on this station since you were 13. That's true. Cuz parenting. parenting. Yep. Anyway, uh, we didn't do the cheap remake of Piranha as you see the movie we're doing is Piranha, you know. 3D or double D. No, no. We went back to the original classic. classic. Roger Corman. I mean, it was, it was born the year you were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, before we get into any of the uh, behind the scenes stuff, that's not usually why you say that, dork. Pay attention. <laughs> anyway. Uh, before we get into the behind the scenes stuff, let's uh, throw it to the trailer so people can see exactly what we're talking about. Hit that trailer. Who could have imagined they were there? Who could have predicted they would attack? And now, who would survive? Your Honor, they're here. Ow! Stay back! Your Honor, they're hungry. strip a man to the bone in a frozen instant of terror. Piranha. They're here. They're hungry. They'll eat you alive. Who can stop them? <laughs> All right. Okay, then. So, I mean, it uh, didn't give anything away, because... I mean, the movie's called Piranha. If you can't figure out what's going to happen basically it's like what people are attacked by piranhas like if that didn't happen you'd be like someone needs to be fired from naming things um anyway um yeah who's this bob o'reilly you're speaking so of? the basic premise is roger corman saw jaws yeah. <laughs> and said hey i should pick a different 
creature that lives in water. Aha! Piranhas are dangerous and Yeah, he's like, we're gonna need a smaller fish. Yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> Instead we're gonna need a bigger boat. We're gonna need a smaller fish. That's exactly what it was. Um but that's basically the premise is there's uh, a s- series of attacks. No, th- no. Oh. There's like a lab that's run by the government and these fish were being not trained but created to uh, attack our enemies. Right. Um, Which sounds really cool. And they cool. got out into American waters where, as you saw in the trailer there, uh, kids are playing and yeah. There's a kid's and camp. And fish are eating. Yeah. So, that guy's uh, nose. That's the basic premise. We'll get into more of that after we pay a couple of bills. Right. Let's hear a word from our real sponsors. These are actual things you can buy if you live in some alternate universe. No. Anyway, um, so here's our commercials that we are making these fat stacks of cash from. <coughs> Fat stacks of this cash. week, Gory Story Time is brought to you by Notflix, the company that takes your favorite movies and TV shows and blatantly rips them off to make not even B movies, B minus movie versions for our streaming service. Um, some upcoming titles are Red Pool, Space Battles. Of course, we have superhero flicks like Arachnid Man or Rat Man and Doctor Weird, and Guardians of Humanity. Rat some, some TV shows exclusive to us include The Family Dude, Minds of Criminals, and Strange Events at the Vitus Bridge. That's not Flix for only four ninety nine a month. Check us out today. We gotta get this not Flix. Um, and by Rogers Rods. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love to fish, whether whether you fish to relax or fish for, or fish, or for a living? There we go. Roger has quality rods for you. Once you wrap your hands around one of our rods, you'll never go back to those flimsy, floppy rods you used to handle. If you want to go deep, sea fishing, try our big black rods. They are longer and sturdier, perfect for catching big red sn- a big red snapper. If the tip of your rod gets a fishy smell, just wash it before you go home to your wife. Or- <coughs> Order one of our rods today and receive our automatic baiting machine. <laughs> for the... No. No. What? Wait, how do you say this word? Novice. novice. Okay, for the novice or master baiter in your life, the Rogers Rods look for the the that's Rogers Rods. Look for them at your local Walmart today, or order online at RogersBigBlackRods.com. <laughs> All right. Now that we've paid some bills. Uh. <laughs> no. This is why. This is why we never have the same people. Twice, yeah, because you have a hard time like keeping a straight face while you're trying to promote these people's products. They get upset with you, and then we have to find new people to like give us money. money. Yeah. You want to go first or me? Well, now to the meat and beef of the show. Okay, I'll go first. Universal Studios attempted to sue New World for spoofing Jaws. However, Steven Spielberg saw the movie and loved it. So they dropped the lawsuit. Bradford Dillman was originally unhappy with his character's 2D nature and asked writer John Sayles why his character was so thin. Sayles responded that Roger Corman regularly did not use good actors in his films, so he deliberately didn't elaborate on characters. Since Dillman was a real actor, he was more than happy to enhance his character's depth. Hmm. Uh, The Piranha... The, the piranha were done by attaching rubber puppet fish to sticks. A waitress at a, from the Holiday Inn where the director and crew were staying stood in for Heather Menzies during topless shots. Menzies was concerned that her husband might, might not approve of the nude scene. Oh, so if you're watching that movie and you're like, 
Ooh, it's about to show her boobs. Nope, it's actually a Holiday Inn waitress. Uh, <laughs> the extras were all paid $5 a day and given a lunchbox. A box lunch. A, bo a box lunch. Which is different. Not the same thing. <laughs> I would like a piranha lunchbox. Mm. Executive producer Roger Corman called this film my homage to Jaws. Which was only three years before. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. I guess. Um, the film was reported to have been shot in 30 days for $660,000. And every cent appears on screen. You see where every penny went. That's true. That... <laughs> um, this movie was one of the first efforts for effects and makeup artist Rob Botton and Phil Tippett. I don't know who those people are. Nope. But we haven't heard their names from things since this, so... I, do, I mean, if I had done more research, I could have found out more, but no idea. Anyway. Uh, the novelization also fills in some trivia about Maggie. When her boyfriend walked out on her, she hired a private, inv a private detective to find him. She got so hooked on her process, she decided to go home. Or de no, decided to go. No, decided to become one herself. Here we go. By the time she caught up with her ex, she wasn't interested anymore in why he left. Okay. Rick Baker was originally tapped to provide the makeup effects. He recommended 17-year-old Rob Botton instead. Okay, look hmm. that is. Uh, Barbara Steele's role was originally written for a man. <gasps> Did she show her boobs? Because if so, that's a weird fact. That, yeah, that would be weird. It's like, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, the score cost $10,000. I wonder if that's on top of the 660 or if... Or if that's part of the 660. Yeah. I mean, it definitely used loud music yeah. to effect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Anyway. Uh, John Sales used the profits from the film to fund his own project uh, projects in... Uh, it was also his script writing debut. I wonder what his projects were, though. It doesn't really say. Uh, the film had documented had some documented production problems, including last-minute cast changes, underwater cameras that kept breaking down, which, by the way, happened in the actual Jaws movie too. Mm -hmm. They had I mean, the shark kept breaking down on that, but right. Um, let's see, union woes, unusable second unit footage, and it still became one of New World Pictures' biggest hits. Ooh. Well, you got to realize I don't know how they weren't making. Good that sounds. Well, they made a bunch of money off of it. Hmm. But. Uh, Steven Spielberg described this film as the best of the Jaws ripoffs. He and Joe Dante, Dante mm -hmm. later collaborated on the Twilight Zone movie. No, it's Twilight or Zone. The, the movie. movie. Yeah, okay. The movie that was the Twilight Zone? The Aquarina Springs and Resort Theme Park in San Marcos, Texas, opened in 1951, and it was later purchased by Southwest Texas State University, now Texas State University, San Marcos. The amusement park was shut down in 1996. The facility is now known as Aquarina Center and Environmental Learning Center. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Barry Brown's last role in a theatrical film, a feature. What was his first or any other role? Because I don't know who that is. Yeah, I don't know. Um, originally, Maggie counted to 300 instead of 100 at the climax. Well, that way the climax lasts longer. Anyway, that was probably changed because in all likelihood, Paul would have drowned after being underwater for that long. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let me count until he's dead. One, two. <laughs> mm. Peter Fonda was originally offered the role for uh, a role of Paul Grogan, or Grogan, whatever, Paul, but turned it down. I would probably guess that's because he read the script. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Saw the amount of money. Although implied by the film, the novelization confirms that Paul and Maggie slept together while Hoke is their prisoner. When? They didn't really have time. I don't think it did. that makes sense. It's like, 
hey, uh, can you turn around and I'm going to bang this broad I just met while you're tied up in my boat. Like that wasn't, it wasn't even like a boat boat. It was like a row boat, like, or a raft or some crap. Like how? Yeah, well, it was in the trailer. The yeah, boat that, it was a little boat though. Like, yeah, I don't understand I would that. like a little more privacy when first banging random chick I met. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the novelization fills in some of the background about Paul's character. His wife left him, which is why he's such a hard drinker. The only explanation given is that she couldn't stand the sight of him. <laughs> well. <laughs> that is a good reason for a divorce, I suppose. I want to vomit whenever I wake up and you're here. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't write, yeah, he doesn't write or try to contact his daughter. Uh, something Laura, the camp counselor, resented him for. Okay. Uh... She later... She later changed her mind about Paul after saving some of the kids from Piranha, uh, and including his daughter. And the main reason Dumont thinks he's drunk over the phone is because during one, of, uh, one visit to the camp, Paul drunkenly threw Dumont in the river when he told him to leave. Okay, now that doesn't make sense. It says that... He's a hard drinker and doesn't try to contact his daughter or even write, right? But previous to this, he also had showed up at the camp and was thrown out. You know, while he was not contacting his daughter that was at the camp, he was at the camp. Yeah, I have no clue. That makes that, no sense. No, it doesn't. The book just Wait a was... minute. Am I putting plot holes into a Roger Corman movie? Oops. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. All right. Uh, well, first, the Rotten Tomato scores. Oh, yes. Um, and this is probably going to surprise anyone that's seen this movie. I love this movie. It uh, is really good. For what it is. For, like, it's Sharknado, but not intentionally that type of movie. You know, it's like, it tried to be serious, but Roger Corman wanted to have a cheap budget, so he always went with, like, crappy actors and didn't do a lot of extra takes. Right. That's why and, 30 and it shows. days. And... and it shows. But the people have it at 41%. And I will say, your Uncle Travis, my brother, he loved these creature feature movies. If it was giant ants or piranhas or it didn't matter what it was, he loved animals in horror movies where they were the villains that were killing the humans. Yeah, I get that. But not even like, I mean, I'm sure he liked Jaws, but like he wanted these type, like the, the B movies. minus movies. Right. Um, and the critics gave it a 72, which is surprisingly really high. Considering like they had it fresh and the people had it rotten. Right. Which, which is usually really doesn't weird. happen unless there's some sort of politics involved or whatever. And, and there's I really not. I don't see any politics. No, there in definitely this. isn't. Um, anyway, what was your favorite scene? Well, I don't know if I have a specific favorite scene because I love do you understand movies the, like hold on, this. Do you understand yes, the way the show works? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you understand that most of the time, neither of us listen to our rule? Yeah, well, not okay. most of the time, but there's been plenty of times where it's A like, lot of the time. There are a lot of But it's of usually times. the things we hate, not the things we like. But go ahead. Um, well, yes, you're right, but I don't care, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if you could have only said that about our debate about Logan. Yeah, but you're not right. <laughs> anyway, back to um, this movie. Yeah, well, I just really like movies like this. Like, I like all of the Sharknado movies. I love Sharktopus. I loved Ghost Shark, okay? I love these terrible movies, I, I like the ones where they were trying... Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yeah, but I like the ones where they were trying. You know, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, no. Um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, but again, like that and Killer Tomatoes and uh, Toxic Adventure, those are actually, like, intentionally trying to be funny, too. This was trying to be a straight-up horror movie. And I don't know. I would put it in the same I mean, it's, sim as those. it's similar. It's similar. So what's your favorite? My favorite scene, as twisted as it is, was probably the fact that they had the balls 
to have a pool of piranha attack kids at a camp while they were swimming and there was just blood all over the water and kids trying to escape from being eaten by these fish and they it's like i missed the fact that it could have been like 20 year old girls in bikinis but they made up for it with a lot of violence towards children <laughs> I like the way that you worded that. I like the way you worded no, that. No, I mean, oh. like, you think about it, they, you know, how many horror movies have had where the killer, whether it's Mike Myers or whatever, sees a little, little kid and, like, doesn't hurt them and goes after the, like, 18-year-old or Right, older. and I get that. Okay. And this one, Roger Corman was like, no, no, get those kids. Right, right, okay. <laughs> it, it. Ballsy. It's a ballsy yes. move. I'm not saying that killing kids is appropriate. Please do not misunderstand. <laughs> what I'm saying is... Approve this had, message. He had the gall to do it. Right. And I appreciated that about it. Okay. My least favorite mm -hmm. was those stupid things. <laughs> Whatever. You just narrowed it down. Well, no. Like, the They're piranhas... They're called actors. No, the, <laughs> the piranhas yeah. were stupid. Because when you saw them not flying out of the water and biting some guy's nose, looking like an actual fish, they were like creatures that weren't piranhas. They had legs. Oh, that was in one scene. That was in the lab because someone was experimenting on that. Well, that is my least favorite part. Okay, so I did not like the that. one thing where you saw some weird creature with legs. Because I would have rathered it just. Like, I thought that was their explanation of, oh, this is why they're doing this. No. So, that was, whatever. They're but doing still. other weird experiments, which would explain in the sequel why they could fly, okay. because they were well. crossbred with flying fish. Which okay. we got to watch that movie sometime. Just, oh. uh, my least favorite part was probably, um, I don't know, I would have to go with uh, some of the, for what it was with it being an exploitive B-movie, there wasn't quite enough boobs. Like, you expect that from this type of movie. And I'm not saying that, like, oh, they got to show that in every movie. This type of movie is known for that. So the fact that it only had a couple shots, it's like, really? Like, I thought that was the point of this kind of movie. Yeah, but instead he was like, you know what? Kids instead. No boobs, kids dying. Which I give him I mean, credit for already. Right. Anyway. Okay. So... Um, Score one to ten. I'd have to give it a seven. I'm gonna go with eight for what it is, not for quality movie, but for B movie of its time, special effects wise. I'm gonna say it's an eight for that genre. But you have to really like that genre, or don't bother. Right. Um, okay. Anyway, all the stuff will be up on the screen. On that side of the screen. Yep. Yep. Fact TV channel eight. You can watch our show. Thursdays, 8.30 p.m. and Fridays, 7 p.m. You can email us at gorystorytime at yahoo.com. Send us ideas of movies or clusters of movies or, like, whatever, whatever you want us to do, right? Complain, compliment, Complain, whatever. Complain, compliment, whatever you want. Like uh, us on Facebook at Gory Story Time. Uh, if you're watching the live stream of this, then obviously you you've like Back TV, TV. But if TV you are happened. watching it on TV, you should like Back TV on Facebook. Yep. Um you can check out their YouTubes, which yeah, are you Falls Area Community Television. And, or you can look at my YouTube, which doesn't won't have this episode necessarily right, right. now, but it does have other stuff that we've done in the past. Uh, it's Juggalo Jake's All One Word. Yeah. And you'll find it. It's got music videos and sketches and a bunch of stuff. Um, Watch us on factdate.com. Yep. And, uh, you know, just to promote it again, Watch whichever version you can of our uh, 100th episode special. We did a roast of each other. There was a lot of cool stuff. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Craig Jakes, all one word, all lowercase. I'm at Jason T. Jakes. All, uh, no, not all anything. Capital J, capital T, capital J. And we don't talk about the show at all, so that's just for, like, whatever, uh, anything else. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's so until next time, I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and father, Craig. And, and sweet, sweet dreams. dreams.